Okay, Google, how to grow your tomatoes like an Italian. How to grow your tomatoes like an Italian. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome to how to grow your tomatoes like an Italian. My name is James, one of the engineering dads, and right here next to me is Project Eden, a self-watering plant using an IoT database for Node Red, and I'm gonna show you how this thing works. But first and foremost, I just wanna explain um, what's happening here. I have an electrical junction box with a computer inside, a couple of sensors to monitor water, a pump to water the plant on my own demand, and then also um, a humidity temperature and a moisture sensor to monitor the health of the plant and I can monitor pretty much anywhere in the world. Um, basically the motive behind this project is sustaining water and not using too much when watering your plants. Um, I'm going to plant some tomatoes here later on but without any further ado let's get into the guts of this project. So firstly we start with our microcontroller. This is an Arduino compatible Wemos D1 Mini with Wi-Fi connectivity so I'm going to go ahead and solder that to my printed circuit board. Great, now that the development board is ready, let's go through each individual component. I'm going to start with the simple float switch. This small plastic sensor acts as a detection method for when there is enough water available for the pump. The switches themselves around the $5 mark and work as a level of the water pushes the plastic cylinder up the shaft. I then decided to incorporate a rain sensor into this project as a means to interlock the pump during rain events and also to complete this as a weather station together with other components. Now to be perfectly honest, I wasn't actually a fan of this module. It costed around $8 and I found it wasn't entirely reliable. It works by short circuiting whenever rain droplets fall on the exposed printed circuit parts. In the end, I ended up passing data from my local weather station, given its far greater reliability, but I'll get into how I did this a bit later on in the video. Now comes the soil moisture sensor. This works very similarly to the last module described, but since water conducts electricity very well, the resistance measured by the two metal parts on the sensor known as electrodes returns a reading of how much water is in the soil. This module is probably the most vital as it gives an indication of if we've either used too much or too little water for the plant. This module is around $5, but I'm probably going to upgrade this to a DIY version of the moisture sensor, which I'll show in future videos for this project. Now since we've covered humidity and temperature sensors in the Charizard humidifier video, which I highly suggest checking out, we're going to move on with the rest of the build. Humidity and temperature weren't entirely necessary for this plant to work, but gives the gardener an idea of the conditions and potential impacts on the plant. Some plants behave differently in humid conditions, so having a method of detection can better invoke a call of action if needed. To control the pump, we're going to be using a 5 volt relay. Normally I'd go with an N-type MOF set setup, but I felt like changing things up a bit this time. Although overkill on this project, I found the relay was actually quite useful for diagnosing faults in the circuit, as this is an outdoor project and it's screwed inside a junction box. Being able to hear the clicking noise of the relay helped in knowing if I had issues with the pump or the circuit itself if the pump didn't start. Now because this project is going to be sitting outdoors, I decided to mount the circuit inside this IP56 rated electrical junction box. What this means is I could spray a high pressure jet of water at the box whilst keeping it pretty intact. On the bottom of the box, I've caught a hole and fed the wires through this jacket to keep everything in one neat location. I've then aided it in a cable jacket with a 5 volt power supply to provide power to both the microcontroller and the pump's relay. I've then added in another hole to fit in my floats which I described earlier as you can see. Now I'm using these little small wire connectors as I kind of got lazy and over soldering. Now besides the rough looking rain sensor which I later get rid of, I'd say this resulted in an overall clean build. Alright, so now into the garage where we go from doing some very light woodworking to building a mount for the plant. I'm simply cutting a frame out to the dimension of the junction box with a supporting backboard with some leftover wood I had from another project. I've then mounted this onto a wooden stake, which I'll then insert into the garden. 
And as for the final touches, I'm just going to place the float switch in this bucket of water, mount the pump and position everything accordingly. I've then silicon any holes in the box and place the power supply in a waterproof box to make sure this thing doesn't get destroyed in the rain. Alrighty, so before we see this in action, I'm going to go through all the software and coding. However, feel free to skip this part in the chapters below, as the files will be made available on our GitHub. But hang around if you're interested. Now to make a start, we're just going to include the Humidity, the PubSub client and the Wi-Fi packages. Then we're going to define all our pins. This is quite simple stuff, as well as defining our Wi-Fi and our MQTT server, um, which would be your personal one. And the next part below is what we use instead of a delay function, which is called the multitasking using the milli functions. I highly recommend you using as it allows you to run multiple functions at once. From there, we're going to go ahead and define our Wi-Fi connectivity function and then also the callback function which allows us to connect to node red. Now, the beauty about this part is, is this is how we control all of our relays. Pretty much here, it's just the pump. So when we switch the pump to on using our dashboard in node red, which we'll get to, the relay receives a message and turns the pump on. And likewise, when it receives a message to turn off from the server, uh, it's pretty much vice versa. I've then got a reconnect function just in case we lose connection to the MQTT server um, that will pretty much get us back online in uh, a five second delay. On to setting up, so we're going to ensure that we hit our port as 1883 and also use our callback function which is what we just went through above and then also our pump, our sensors and our level switch. In the loop itself, I've pretty much got a level check and a pump check function, which I'll show below. And then also, if we lose connection to the server, this is where we call the reconnect function. Further below is where we have our humidity and temperature sensor. And all this is doing here is getting readings live and then calculating it to Celsius because um, we use Celsius here in Australia, but you can use Fahrenheit if you're in a country that uses Fahrenheit. I'm then converting this using the static char function so it can be read by node red and transferred through the server. And I'm simply doing this by using the DTO STRF function and then publishing this to node red um, with the topics plant uh, slash tube temperature, humidity, soil, and so on. Okay, so now onto the functions that I mentioned earlier. The first one being level check is that every five seconds, that should actually be 30 seconds, so I'm just going to go ahead and change that to five seconds. Bear with me. Okay, so likewise with what I went through above is how uh, every five seconds we're going to be sending data to node red based on what the level switch is doing. So if there's no water in the tank, um, it's pretty much going to send a message or show us graphically that there's no water left over. And that is that function there. And lastly, it's just going to be a pump check. So I wanted to put a bit of a kill switch in here. I wasn't really happy with the fact that the server might disconnect and the pump might run over time. So I've put a 90 second uh, kill switch here, pretty much saying if the pump is running and it's noticed that it's running for longer than 90 seconds, let's just kill power to the relay and let's stop the pump completely. Okay, so this part is probably quite easily my favorite part of the project as it's literally a graphical interface we're using to control the tomato plant. As you can see, we get this constant measurement of humidity, temperature, moisture, and rain that's being sent to us every 30 seconds as we explain in the Arduino code, and then also the option to control the pump using these two switches over here. So we hit pump on, the pump will run like so, and then we'll hit pump off. And what you should see every 30 seconds is the moisture increasing. Um, that would give you an indication that your pump's working if you're controlling it from anywhere, as well as showing that the level is okay with the float switch that we described earlier. Now, while we're getting to node red, or before we get into node red and all the flows, I'd like to give a shout out to two people, Alex Control X for providing the CX um, hide and all other functions to be able to change things in the graphical interface as you saw um, with the pump uh, changing colors and also uh, Steve Cope who helped with the SQL database which I'll also show further. I'll leave a link to both their YouTube and GitHubs in the description below so you can learn what I did in this project. 
So firstly, I'll show you how I program the switches. So we have the pump on switch and the pump off switch. And all this simply is saying is whether it receives a true message or not based on what I click in the database. This then gets sent to the MQTT server as you saw with the topic with the plant pump on in the void callback function. What I'm then doing is making sure this upgrades in the updates in the graphics like so. This is using draw SVG. Now to go into how this thing works would require a whole video on itself. So just bear with me as I try and simplify it. Literally all I'm doing here is putting in the code that represents the graphic and I write these functions that I'll go through in a sec and every time there's an action, the code runs and changes the graphical interface. Now let's go into one of these functions now. So quite simply all this is saying is if the pump is turned on, let's change the color of the pump to fill it to show that it's running. And then like so with humidity, every 30 seconds load the message with a percent sign to show the humidity and update that in the graphical interface. Now going back to the graphics, you see where this happens now. And simply the topic is plant humidity. Now this is an interesting one that I did here. I actually use this for the um, surf forecaster and that's why you can see determining wind condition as a function when really it's actually for rain. So I should actually go ahead and change that. But simply all I'm doing is going to Willy Weather's website which is my local weather station and passing the HTML data to find the local rain status. And again this is just using functions that I'll put in the description below and you can play around with. Quite simply all we're doing is referencing the location where the rain is in the HTML. I'm just going to change that like I mentioned. And then of course, tell me what the rain is and update it in the graphical interface and as you can see, right now there's zero millimeters of rain. Now lastly, like I mentioned before, um, again shout out to Steve here. Basically, what I've programmed here is this SQL database so I can actually go back in time and see how the plan's been performed. performing. Now, I'm actually still working on this as it was a late addition to the project, but simply all it is is this table here that shows a timestamp, um, the census for temperature, humidity, moisture, rain, like so. And what I can do is import the records and you'll see the data import. And it's kind of in a weird order at the moment. I'm still trying to work this one out. And we'll see that come into fruition in future videos. Now if you found Project Eden interesting, please like and subscribe. I'll leave the links below to the repositories of how this thing was built, including a cost breakdown. I um, highly recommend giving this one a go. It was a good sustainability initiative and it was also fairly cheap to build. Um, as you can see from the time lapses, it was very simple um, with a bit of coding to go around that, but I'll leave the little IDE in the description below so you can have a go at the coding, change things up a bit. Um, good for people to add onto the wheel if they want. Um, and yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go plant some tomatoes here now, so hopefully we get some sky tall tomatoes very soon with this self-watering plant. Hopefully. Make the Italians proud.